In this video, I want to talk specifically to parents or to those who wish to be parents one day. Kids, you could stay if you'd like. But I want to talk first about the responsibilities of the parents. A parent's responsibility is to make sure that their child is physically fed and nourished. So you have to give them food and water. You have to also make sure that your children have shelter, have a roof over their heads. You have to make sure that they have a good education in this world so that they are prepared to succeed. But there's one responsibility that is more important than the rest. And I see a lot of families neglecting this main and most important responsibility that parents have for their children. And that responsibility is for the parents to make sure that their children are holy that they are on the path toward getting to heaven. And the problem, which is not completely the fault of the parents in a lot of cases, the major problem and the main obstacle we have to overcome in all of this is that the world is not religious. The people of the world want to please themselves only. They don't want to please God. And I'm talking about the secular society. There are a lot of people in this world that are holy, that are very religious, but the secular society, when it comes to the media, when it comes to social media, television, TV, a lot of even the schools that your kids go to, a lot of that is filled with people who do not love God and who do not see God as a priority, even if they believe in Him. And so the problem that we have to address is that it is very easy for our children to be lost in this world that we live in. If they have a phone, they could see so much on that phone. And I'm sure you guys are well aware of what a child can access on a phone. The problem is that if you leave your children to be raised by social media, television, music, the secular society, if that happens, you will lose your child because they will not have the proper moral and spiritual formation. They will learn bad things about human sexuality, about drugs, alcohol, other social issues that the world does not agree with the church on. And the church represents the word of God. And so if we stick to the teachings of the church and if we form our children in that way, we have a better chance at keeping them close to Jesus and keeping them living a good moral life. Obviously, all that you can do is maybe not enough sometimes. But it's a parent's responsibility to do their best and to not leave their children to be raised by the world, but to make sure that they raise them in the way that Jesus wants them to. So the most important thing you have to do on a daily basis is to bring Jesus into your home. And the first thing to realize is that Jesus is not going to force himself into your home. He doesn't force himself in. He comes when we open the doors to him. And the second thing to realize is that we are all sinners and we need the grace of God no matter what. We are human beings. We sin and we need the grace of God in order for us to be guided down the right path. So I want to talk about a sinner in the Bible who accepted Jesus not only to himself but into his home. And that person is named Zacchaeus. We may not be exactly like him in the sin that he struggled with, but the fact is that we're all sinners. And so I want to focus on Zacchaeus and I want to see in the story of Luke chapter 19 what we can learn from him and how he went from being a great sinner to accepting Jesus Christ into his home. The gospel starts out by describing Zacchaeus and who he was. And it says that he was a chief tax collector and rich. So that's the first problem right there that he had is that he was known for two things his social status, he was a chief tax collector, and the amount of money that he had. So the question for you, brothers and sisters, is what defines you? Is it your social status? Is it what kind of job you have? Is it how much money you have? Is that the most important thing in your life? And if that's the case, it means that God is not the most important thing in your life. It means that you see this earth as your final resting place and not heaven. And it means that God is not going to guide you down the right path because you're not willing to accept him into your home. It could be that or it could be any type of sin or way that we define ourselves. But the fact is that's how Zacchaeus was. He was so far from God because he was so consumed with his money and with the things of this world. But it all changed when he saw Jesus passing by. He saw Jesus passing by and the gospel describes him as a short man. And so the crowd was so big that he could not even see Jesus, but he wanted to see who Jesus was. And that is the first step right there toward how to bring Jesus into your home. Get to know Jesus. 
That's what Zacchaeus wanted to do. He wanted to get to know Jesus. How do you get to know Jesus? There are many ways. But the first thing to think about is, how do I get to know somebody, a human being? It's that you talk to them. So one of the most important things that you could do in your daily lives as a family is to pray together. It's good to eat together. That's a very beautiful thing to do. But to pray together, you know, like they say, a family that prays together stays together. And your kids will have the best chance at staying in unity with you and in unity with God ultimately if you pray together as a family. That's how to get to know Jesus, is that you speak to Him. But also Jesus speaks to us so you can read the Bible You can read the Word of God and have the Word of God enter your home and Jesus Himself, who is the living Word of God, will dwell in your presence. Jesus says, where two or more are gathered in my name, there I am with them. So gather the family every single day to pray. I don't care what it is. If it's a couple minutes, try to make it more than a couple minutes. Eventually, try to pray a rosary together. If you want to kick the devil out of your house and bring Jesus in, One of the best things that you could do is pray the rosary as a family together every day. And the next thing that Zacchaeus did that we could learn from is that he did not follow the crowd. He saw that the crowd was following Jesus, but he did not follow them. He went his own way because he wanted to find another way to see Jesus. Do not follow the crowd when it comes to doing things that are against the law of God and that are sinful for us. Follow Jesus. That's what Zacchaeus did. He went to see where Jesus was going and he followed Jesus. It would have been easier to follow the crowd. It is easier for us to follow the crowd, to go with the flow, to do what everybody else is doing, to allow our kids to go to parties, to drink alcohol at a young age, to do impure things just because everybody else is doing them. We have to follow and we have a duty and you specifically parents have a duty to follow the laws of Christ not the laws of this world and not the people of this world. And it's going to require you to do something uncomfortable like how Zacchaeus had to do. He left the people and he had to go and he found that the only way that he could see Jesus is if he climbed a tree. This is one of the richest men in all of Israel. Climbing a tree like a little kid because he wanted to see Jesus. But the thing is, he didn't care about what the people thought of him. All he wanted to do was to see Jesus. And so do not concern yourself with what the people think of you, especially in how you raise your family. Think about how Jesus wants you to raise your family and do it that way. And the last thing Zacchaeus did that could teach you about how to bring Jesus into your home and to raise a strong Christian family is that he made a serious change. The gospel says, And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured and said, He has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. This man made it known to Jesus that he realized the wrong way that he was living his life. He realized that he had defrauded people. He realized that he had been greedy. And so, he didn't only pray and say, Jesus, I'm sorry. He realized that if Jesus was coming to his home, he had to clean up. And so that's what you have to do, brothers and sisters. Clean the house. Look for the things that you are doing that are wrong. Talk about it with your spouse. See the sins in your life. Examine them so that you could get rid of them. Ask Jesus for the grace because when Jesus comes to your house, it needs to be clean. You need to get rid of the sinful habits and you need to try your best to ask Jesus for the grace. He knows that we are weak. He knows that maybe the things that you are thinking of right now are extremely hard for you to change. Just like it was very hard for Zacchaeus to make that big of a commitment. But the other thing that he wants you to know is that he is with you and that he will give you his grace. Jesus wants to come into our homes. Jesus wants to see holy families. He wants to see holy children. He wants us to try our best 
to show love toward one another, to be like Him, to have His grace in our hearts so that we could be shining examples of what it means to be Christians for all of those in the world that are so far from God. Jesus wants to sanctify the world through us and through our children, and it's up to the parents to make sure or to at least do their best to make sure that that happens.